morning, everybody. So let me just drop this link in a couple spots and then we will begin. Good morning, everybody. So getting set up here still, I have to just drop this in the Twitterverse and then we're ready to go. It's so interesting, no matter how much, and I'm always behind in the, in the morning. It's kind of weird. Uh, And let's just go here and go coffee. If you can never find this, just use the hashtag coffee and charts and you should be able to, to find it. Uh, let me just do this and go there and that's it. Good. And let me just drop the link and I am done. All right. Perfect. So you have housing data, consumer confidence, and PMI are all coming out today. And we're going to have to watch all of those. So let's get started here. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Good morning, John. Good morning, Compassionate. Hey, Jen. Good morning. Uh, I like Amazon right now. Um, I would not wait for the split. No, here's, here's what you have to watch about Amazon, and here's what I would focus on with Amazon. Okay. Today you have two data points um, that are going to come out. Okay, so the first data point that you're going to have to deal with is housing starts, right? So, or housing price index is going to show you the price of housing. That's due out in 26 minutes. Uh, next, you're going to have consumer confidence. That's going to be at 945 with an estimate of 55. That can affect retail, but 
Uh, that's PMI at 945. Consumer confidence at 10 is definitely going to affect retail. So you might want to wait till 10 o'clock to just see how they act. But for me, yeah, I like them. I like them a lot. And I think that you could see them rally up. So definitely something that's on my radar that I'm going to be watching, uh, to say the least. I, I'll definitely be watching that those numbers and seeing how they come out because th those numbers are really important today. Uh, but you see how you're breaking out over here at this 2316? See if you can break through that. And that's a higher high. So you have the five over, you have the 21 over, right? You have your over on the 10. So you have, you have not been up here uh, since back here. So this is starting to push up. The longer it stays here, the more it'll start to go sideways and point up, which is really what you want to see. Uh, once that starts happening, it easily can lift up. So I think you're trying to split hairs here, trying to figure out, do I buy it before earnings or before the split or after the split? Uh, if I wanted to own it, I'd probably just simply wait for 10 o'clock and see how we respond to the consumer confidence numbers and then kind of go from there. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not remotely surprised that the markets are pulling back today. I actually think it's healthy, quite frankly. Um, I am surprised that TLT is selling down again like people didn't know. This is us I'm looking at doing a, a trade here. It hasn't triggered yet. Let me clear all that off. But I am kind of surprised that you're seeing the bond market sell off. Like we didn't know this was coming on tomorrow, that they weren't going to sell bonds. So I'm kind of surprised by that. And that's starting to roll. So that could affect tech. Um, and now you're seeing that this bid up. Uh, they're talking about 286, 283. I mean, are you, you know, so I find it kind of interesting that we're watching the bond, bond sell off and that could affect equities today. So uh, just watch what happens. But if I wanted to own this, I would definitely be looking at this 2316 and making sure I clear that first more than the time interval that you're looking at. And I'd see how we respond to the 10 o'clock number. That's how I would play that stock. So I hope that helps. Yeah, I would be. Uh, John, I don't even really need to go through the chart. I mean, the bottom line is with the EU, with the with the UK doing what they're doing uh, and coming out and saying uh, we're going to do a 25 percent windfall tax. They're going to just transfer profits into these type, types of trusts that have different tax advantages. I mean, that's what they're going to do. Let's just call it what it is. Uh, and when they do that, you're going to see these kinds of names move higher. So that's really what you want to focus on. Okay, that kind of stuff. But yes, absolutely, it can, John. If you just keep going. What's going on, John? Charge point. Could this go up temporarily since gas and oil is going up again because of the EU? Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be the driver for it. So, I mean, here's the thing about charge point. Um, here's the thing about Blink, about all these names, right? We passed this trillion dollar bill. And we were going to see all this green energy and we we're going to see new charging stations all over the country. And right. I mean, I hate to sound this facetious when I talk like this. Anyone seen a new charging station? A anyone? I mean, I, you know, infrastructure bill, we're going to build bridges. Anybody seen a bridge being worked on? So all this going on and we're not seeing anything, nothing. So, you know, it's a real problem. Um, not just a political problem, but nothing's being done here. So I don't see any reason to be piling these stocks. I have a massive downtrend that I see no reason why that's going to change. If you're interested in trying to play this just because of technicals, get above and close above the 50 because that's the only thing that's working. That's the only time you're getting any sustained rally is that 50, right? Breaks over it, comes back, tests it, and then goes. It's the only sustained rally you're getting in that. But do I think it's going to rally because energy and oil is rallying? No, I don't think that at all. Uh, they have to announce it. I think X dividend soon. Hold on. Let's take a look at the BPT dividend and see when that's coming out. Uh, please like this video. It helps support the channel. Let's go here. Um, when is their next dividend? They haven't announced it yet, so they'll announce it. 
They haven't announced it yet. Let's just take a look at something here and see if we can get an understanding of when that would be. So there's two months and five days there. Four weeks there. So anytime between a month or two after earnings. I mean, it doesn't really seem like there's any rhyme or reason to it. Does there? Um, so you're between one to two months from earnings that they announce that dividend. So, or they go X dividend. So you're four weeks in now. So worst case scenario, I would say that you're out to here. So maybe, yeah, maybe end of June, maybe end of June. I would say before the end of June, that dividend's coming. Lithium and TNA. So let's go here and start with TNA. So I like TNA a lot. Now, we're coming in this morning a little bit. Uh, I don't really have a problem with it. I mean, nothing's going to go straight up. This hit 46. We're at 44. Uh, where are you at? Right. This was 44.30 this morning. Uh, if I take out the 42.20, I'll probably be somewhat concerned if I take out the lower low. Other than that, I'm not, I'm not really concerned. I mean, you're not going to go straight up. I, I never thought that. I think you might go sideways into tomorrow and then maybe trade up, but we'll see. I'm in no no hurry there. I have a position in it. I'm up in that position, and I'm just going to leave it alone for a little bit and see if I can actually see if we actually ca caught a bottom, which we may have here. Uh, this little positive divergence is pretty interesting. I mean, it's not as steep as I'd like it to be, but it's there. Um, and I think see if we can get above the 50 and how we're going to act at the 50. So I'm willing to stay in that because that at least gets me to, you know, the 50, 51 level up here before we do that, Vivian. So I like it. But, you know, you have to see. See how it plays out. Look at the weekly. I mean, it's the first time you've made a higher high, right? Like, look, all these wicks never closed higher highs. Never. One here. Once. And then we never had follow through. I mean, maybe that's what's going to happen here, but we're nowhere near those levels. So it's quite possible that... Um, you know, maybe over these levels that we do see something like that. They are pointing straight down, but, you know, you broke here and you are at levels that are pretty much insane on, on the, uh, on the sale side. So that's how I would look at it. LT HM, was that it? So let's talk about this. Um, you know, I mean, it's on fire. There's not really much to say. You broke out here and you're trying to rally. You're pulling back today. Um, Hopefully this pulls back, builds a flag, and then pushes. I mean, that's what I would be looking for. I, would I be buying this? No. Now, but watch what happens here. Because if you get above this, people are going to get a little FOMO. And they're going to think they're going to miss. And they're probably going to get involved. So something to think about. That's how I would look at it. What's going on, Jack? I think that you need to look at this and start being um, – I think you need to look at this and start being a buyer of dips. I mean, that's really where my head is. Crude oil spiking up 3.5% today to a 119 rate rating, reading um, is not helping, but, um, you know, let's see what happens there. Uh, I think that energy just looks great, but, you know, I think you're just going to bounce around. I, I don't – you know – Look, what's, what are people going to do when the market doesn't go down 2% when they think it's going to happen today? It's down 1%. Are people going to stop buying stocks? I don't know. I don't think so. I, we'll have to see, but I think we're grossly oversold and I think funds are grossly uh, underinvested. Uh, good morning. What's going on, Trey? Hey, Haley. Energy. Yep. So I'm, I'm in both of those trades. Um uh, I mean, my, my single largest position right now is going to be uh, energy. So I, I don't see any reason to be doing anything else or really looking at anything else long term. I have some other bets that I'm considering. Uh, I've broken a higher high here. This is setting up to push. When you break out of these levels, it can go on for months, right? When you pop out of this, for example, we popped out of this here, right? And we just kept going. Even on the negative divergence, you just kept on going. I mean, you know what the party's going to end, but I mean, that's the thing about a negative divergence. You know the party's going to end, but if you said here, hey, the party's ending, um, you know, and you, did, you didn't wait for it to actually end, you missed the three-year bull run on energy, 
So I would not not buy it because you're not picking off the lows. You follow me? So I would watch this very closely. Um, as far as the names that you're talking about, like XOM, I mean, there's nothing to say here. It's got, it's going to 100. I mean, we've been in this from the newsletter and in the trading room. We've been in this since 85 bucks. I haven't sold the share. I haven't trimmed it. Leave it alone. Get my dividend and it goes higher. So there's very little... Uh, very little to do there. And that's definitely something that's on my my radar for sure. I mean, I, I love these names. I haven't moved them. Um, I'm in this. I think this is going to 200. Um, we're only up four dollars in this from the you know from when we entered, but I mean you, does that remotely look like something that you want to, you know, short or sell? I mean, you know, wake me at 200. I mean, that's kind of how I feel about it. Oxy is the one that most hedge funds are playing. And it's got this line setting up here on the monthly. I think you're up about 3 or 4% this morning. I, I don't buy them when they're bidding up. Uh, we're in this from 67. So we're up almost about 10% in it now, right? Roughly. So I like it. I mean, wake me. I think 80 is probably an understatement, probably 100. The only thing about these names is you have to realize there will be a time where they just crash again like this. Everyone will wonder what happened to them. And there's three things that are going to drive energy down. You're going to have to deal with uh, sanctions being lifted at some point. That's going to drive it down. The war ending on any way would drive energy down precipitously. Uh, so those two things are going to drive energy down. Okay. Uh, and then opening up drilling or refineries, which does not seem to be something that's on uh, the global policy of having more refineries right now which is just absolute insanity to me because um, you took so much money out of the market, but it is what it is. I mean, or money. You took so much of the refinery gas out of the market. So we're going to need a little more coffee here. I can feel that already. So I hope that helps Haley, but I love the sector. Hey, Cameron, SBAC. Yeah, I like that. If it can get over, up and over and get some volume, you need some volume and you need to get up and over. I see the flag. Just got to do it. You have a trend line up here. Hopefully you see that, but let's just put it in. Take me two minutes. No, not even two minutes. Did it. So you still have a trend line there. So be, watch that. And what was the other one? UTSL. Let's take a look at that UTSL. Oh, then you're breaking above that flag and you're seeing where that's at and then kind of go from there. Um, right. I mean, just watch that. Would I buy that? No, I wouldn't buy that. I mean, if I wanted to play, if I really wanted to play it, I would just buy Duke. If I wanted to play utilities, just buy Duke. I mean, why even do anything else? I mean, Duke's going to lead. Uh, if you want to get speculative, you buy me. You know, me at 67, 68 was a buy. Now you're at the 50 day. And now you have to watch what it does. So I, I would not be buying the 3X bull fund with the second largest holding against the 50 day. I would hold off and see how it acts. So I'm kind of go from there. Just put this in here too. I have a big position in this. Just want to see what's happening so far. But I don't see sense in doing anything so far. Uh, yep, please like the video and share this on social media. I purposely don't run ads um, so that you are not uh, bothered. Cost rolling. I mean, we had a nice trade on that the other day, Anna, um, you know, off of earnings. And, and that was it for me for the trade. I mean, here's resistance, right? Like here, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of all these indicators. So there's your level. I mean, it doesn't get any cleaner. So you, you just need to watch this, right? Uh, you just really need to watch this kind of stuff. But that's really where you're at. I, I, I like it. I think it can get going, but... I mean, the, look, the names in this space that look like they could go are like 
Travolta. I mean, these kinds of gaps where people were just dead wrong on, you have these huge short positions where they thought they were right and they're just dead wrong. Uh, so you can see names like that bounce. But in regards to your question, I don't know if you're looking long or short. I'm right against resistance. I mean, I, I bought it. I, we made like 10 bucks on that trade and then just moved on, you know, made $10 a share and then on to the next trade. I, I'm not in it at all anymore. I hope that helps, Anna. Yeah, you're welcome, John. Anytime. My pleasure. What's going on, Cervathia? BBBY and AMC. So I think names like AMC can outperform. Like I think like names like AMC and GME can really outperform. Um, I think you're going to see, you know, people like he was on CNBC today. People are excited by that. Look, here's how you have to think about these things. Okay. AMC, um, GME. I mean, this is the only thing I'm going to say about these kinds of names. And um, I think AMC with the, this movie out, Top Gun, people are going to the movie theaters. I saw more people post that they went to the movie theaters uh, this weekend than in a long time. Um, people want to get out. I mean, that's just the way it is. So what happens here with these kinds of movies and, and what transpires? Well, that remains to be seen, doesn't it? Um, but we're going to have to kind of see how that goes. And then we're going to kind of have to go from there. Right. That's what we're going to have to do. So let's see. Let's see how it plays out. But I really um, I think that this could go. I think this could be a, I think it have a big move. OK. I mean, it's a real company that could actually make money again um, when, you know, they start when they start you know going to theaters and things like that. Now, I mean, this was at. You know, back here, we were at in 19, you were at 11, 12. So for this to stay around here and then push higher as it rebuilds with all their capital. I mean, they have more capital now than they've ever had. Right. I mean, the guy literally raised billions of dollars for the company. He did everything right with his free popcorn back here and then just sold stock right into it. Right. Like and he even went on like certain shows and told people he was doing it. Like, look, I, my goal is to rec uh, keep the company. And that's exactly what he did. He did a great job. He did a much better job than GME. Um, so I, I like that, and I think that can move. Uh, I think that can. I think that can absolutely move. I would not want to be on the other side of that trade. I would not want to be short that right now. Uh, this is just going to be a, a huge short position that people are going to get squeezed on. You know, I, I, there's nothing redeeming about this. I don't know people that are going there. I know people clip those coupons and then go to the store, um, but it's just so highly manipulated. You're just gambling. I mean, you, you just buy it. And what you do with it is you just leave it alone. And then when it goes up, you sell into it. I mean, that's all you can do. You're just waiting for one of these, right? I mean, that's all you're doing, right? You're just waiting for one of those. It doesn't even happen on earnings very often, does it? So you're waiting for some news or somebody on Wall Street bets to decide they want to play with it. And then it goes. Or some hedge fund to leak something. And then they, they jam everybody up. So I... I wouldn't play that. AMC has a real business. They have a very real business. And uh, there's about three days of short interest there. So that makes sense to me. Hey, Mandar, good morning. Good morning, night. Thoughts on C above 54. Yep, I know a lot of people are looking at the financials. Um, I'm not a big fan of them here. So... You know, I'm I'm really not I'm really not looking at them here and, and thinking that um, this is something that you know I got to be in. I mean, I don't even really need to do this, but I think it's great you're above them all. Are we going to stay above them all? I don't know. I don't know. The one that makes the most sense to me is this. This makes the most sense. Okay, because I came back to like a major, major support level, right? All the way, we didn't go to the pre-pandemic level, but you, you came back to these major support levels. You held, you're flipping. I mean, JP Morgan makes the most sense to me. Citigroup has a lot of internal problems, a lot, and they have to fix a lot of stuff. But could that go? Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe you can get to 58, maybe. Um, I wouldn't want to own Citigroup long-term, so it, it wouldn't appeal to me. I'd want to own JP Morgan long-term. I'd want to own Goldman Sachs long-term, right? Um, 
when Goldman came down to here, I mean, I just put some away and just forgot that I, you know, I owned it. I mean, it's just being candid. Um, you know, I'm not suggesting it's going to go right back up, but like when it was down in these levels, I just put it away, forgot I own it. I'll look at it in a year. Um, I, I do think that you can trade back up to these levels in the next 12 to 18 months. Yeah. And that's how I'm looking at them. So, but I'd rather own that than this. I mean, they all trade in tandem until they don't, right? And this one has a lot of issues. There's a lot there. It's like buying Bank America. I mean, Bank America has so many issues. So, and you can see, like, just go look at the ones that are off the 50. And you can see which ones you should be in, right? Right? So, I mean, even your city groups off of it. So, if you want to play that one, play it. But it's not the one that I would play of the group. I'd be, I'd be really focused on the fundamentals of those groups. Uh, FICO and FD, FDS. So let's look at FICO. Um, you're right on that 50 and see if it breaks it. If it does, then maybe you can get up to this level. You get the 416. I, I don't have any volume. So I, it's not something I would play. There's no volume there. So um, if you look at something like, you know, like here, like let me give you an example. There's no volume there either, but I, I know what I own. Like that's kind of my, the point, right? Like do I really want to be in FICO for the next? Like when you're buying something like this, you have to realize that you're buying this long term, right? You're buying this because you've been basing for over two years. So do I really want to buy that? Probably not. I mean, that's kind of where my head is. Could it go? Yeah. I mean, if you flip the 50 and you got above 411, you can give it a shot. If it closes under the 50 at the end of the day that you're in it, just close it out. I mean, that that's really a very simple trade. If you if that's one that you really want to be in, it's too thin for me. Um, fact set, I like this kind of stuff because you haven't tested the 50 yet. And I think the majority of these names on this rally could test the 50 and then see where they go. So that could get to 409, 408, 409. That could definitely happen. Uh, and that's something that, that you could look at there. I don't know that I'd be rushing into that. Uh, you're welcome, Haley. Any thoughts on APPS earnings? No thoughts on it whatsoever. Uh, it's on the, the list of names that I'm watching tonight for sure. Like that's definitely on my on my list. It's definitely on my radar. Um, let me go through that. So what you're seeing is trying to rally, fails, trying to rally. You have earnings. So it's a coin toss, right? I mean, you are tonight. Um, so it's a coin toss. I mean, one time it did nothing. Another time it dropped straight down. Another time straight down. Another time down. So like you just kind of have to go through them and say, am I, I going to get a huge gap up? Am I getting a gap down? Like I, you don't know what you're getting. So I have no idea what they're going to be. I can, I can look at the past and go, they're beating sequentially, so they better keep beating sequentially or they're going to have a real problem on their hands. I could do that. I can look at it from that perspective. Um, what level would I be a buyer of ABBV? I don't know that I would be a buyer of ABBV. So uh, let's get rid of everything. Yeah, I'm not so sure that I would be a buyer of this. I mean, I, I have an island, right? So, like, I, I have two islands. So, you have an island right here, right? You can see that, right? And right now, I'm starting to form another island right here. So, I, I'm not so sure I'd be going anywhere near this. Um, where would I have to do it? It'd have to be over this before I'd even consider it. It'd have to be 157. Now, if I overlay what I just did with the indicators, yeah, I mean, you're right to that 50 and you stopped. So, right, you're right at that 50 and stopped. So, I mean, that's pretty clear where your level is, 50. That's what I would focus on. What's going on, Paul? Uh, I would be buying 
I would be buying LABU. I like it a lot. I do. I like that a lot. Um, we've been picking at it. I have a whole trade set up on it. But over 21, you almost have to be a buyer. You almost have to. Because eventually it's going to go. It's just a question of when. And I'm starting to see volume pick up. Like, look at the volume in this. Look at that range, right? So if you look at what's going on here, since it's been dropping, people have just been buying and buying and buying it. Um, people were buying it at 10 going, oh, it's got a hold. And I kept saying, let's just wait. Maybe we'll get five. And fortunate enough, we did. Um, I would just scale into it and own it. And I would treat it like an option. I mean, that's really how I would play it. I would treat it like a long-term option. And that's how much money I would invest in it, as much as you would put in an option. Because it's, an, it's a bet that biotech's coming back, right? That's the bet. The bet is that biotech is not going to zero. If biotech doesn't go to zero, LABU will go up. The problem is the cost structure costs you money the whole time. So you have to keep that in mind. But I think biotech can go up. I think at least you're hitting that 50. So that should move it, but we'll see. But I do like it. Um, but I'm looking long-term with it and scaling in, but treating it like you know a, an option because of how it'll bleed. Uh, any interesting plays, Bitcoin, SPY, or IWM? So I think out of those three, um, let's do this. Um, Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go near this. I, I think you had a great day. I'm glad of it. I mean, look, Paul, this is the this is where I'm at with it, buddy. I'll tell you exactly where I'm at with it. Let me just go here and get rid of all this, and I'll just walk you through it. And get rid of that. Bonk, bonk, right? So you have a double top. Here's your neckline. You're hanging on to that neckline by your fingernails, Right? You're hanging on that neckline by your fingernails. You break that, double top's over. I mean, that's a confirmed double top if you break that. Um, you know, I, I like anchored VWAP in some spots. I think people can use it too much. I could draw anchored VWAP all over the place, right? And then uh, you could just say, oh, it broke this anchored VWAP. It broke that anchored VWAP. I mean, you, you know, so there's a reason why I draw anchored VWAP on certain spots, right? Like this is telling you nothing. Um, so let's get rid of them all. So what I like to do with them is like, let's just take this anchored VWAP for a minute. Okay. And you see this break on the weekly. So this is roughly when we had people like Paul Tudor Jones coming out and saying, this is an inflationary hedge. Okay. So that's when people started buying it based upon it being an inflationary hedge. Um, until I am back over that level, I have no interest in owning this. Uh, I, I sold every single thing I have in crypto uh, after the uh, the Luna debacle. Uh, the fact that people are out there buying like Tron at 20% quote stable coin, I mean, just shows me how much dumb money still in this. Um, so I would be really, there's no other thing, there's no other way to call it because dumb money. Like, so I, I would be really careful buying any of these right now. Left shoulder, right shoulder, head. Here's your neckline. You're getting ready to break it. Um, so I would be, here's the same date, right? If one, so, you know, this can easily get to that level, easily get to that level. So yeah, these are not neat things that I would be buying at all. I, you know, if I could find a way to short stable coins, if I could find a way to do that, I, I would short them and go away. And I'd pay the 20% that they're paying out in a heart. I wouldn't even think about it because uh, it's an unsustainable model. And it's just a question of when it breaks. So now that's done. Uh, what else do we have that we should focus on? We should probably focus on the SPY because uh, you brought that up. Well, this is your first really higher high on the SPY since March. We really have not done this. Um, now, do we get this doji later in fall? Yeah, you could. Like you're, you're not out of the woods, but could you have bottomed? Yeah, there's some signs here that we bottomed. There are some signs. Now, I'm not saying that we did. I'm saying there's signs that we did. So let's watch how we act around here. Let's watch how we act around the 50-day. 
um, and the 21, there's your 10 and your 21. And let's see how we do. But right now I need to get through 415 and push. I'm at 412 this morning. So that's really where my head is with that. IWM benefits the most uh, from the, uh, the, the rally in bonds. Now, if the rally in bonds ends, IWM is going to have a bad day. It's going to have a bad day. So something to think about. But that's really where my head is. All right. I, I would rather play IWM than anything right there. Tesla. So it's going on. Jacob, uh, bu 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 give me one second, please. All right, so in regards to Tesla, let's get to it and take a look at it. Yeah. Now, I know people think there's this overhang of, um, you know, what is he doing? What is he doing with Twitter? I, I, I don't think that's the overhang. I, that's my personal opinion. Now, this morning, you're bidding up again. That would give me concern. Um, if I was in options, I'd probably be blowing them out off the open, quite frankly. Um, we have some option trades. I will be looking for signs of closing them out. We bought some calls on um, Thursday and Friday, but I would definitely be um, looking at blowing them out today. Now, then I am up and the market's not. That's, a, that's weird to me. So I, I want to see how this plays out. Um, but I think what you're going to do is have some kind of blow off and then pull back. So I, I would be selling into that. Um, that's kind of my game plan right here. I'm not so sure that I'm going to clear this 21 on the first time. I may pull back down to like a 10 or pull back to this level of 706, sit up and go again. I mean, the greatest, the greatest thing that this market could do is sell back down and then just convince everybody. And then everyone's convinced again that the market's going lower. And that they don't, you know, and now what? And then it doesn't go lower, right? I mean, like, that's the best thing that this market could do to scare the heck out of everybody, right? So what does that mean? And why bring it up that way? Well, why am I I'm bringing it up that way? Because I think that that's what's going to happen. So names like this, I think they're great. And I think that you should be looking at them. But just watch that 21 day. Because if you reject that 21 day, well, then you're no different than what happened here. Right. You're no different than what happened here. You've had an issue with this 21 day. So to think that you're just not going to have an issue with it now, you know, I, I don't agree with that. I think that you could. So, I, again, you know, we have positions um, that we started lower. And I think that today's a kind of an interesting day. If, if we spike up, I'll stay with it. But I, I'm leaning towards selling. I'm not leaning towards um, adding to that. I certainly wouldn't be adding. To, like if you're talking about stock, stock's different. I certainly wouldn't be adding to options here, right? I mean, we're up 10% on the VIX. You want to be buying options into that? So I think it's very interesting that you hit that 50-day imbalance. And now you're on the other side of this trend line on the VIX. And that would affect my ability to buy options today. I would not be a buyer of options today because of that. Maybe, maybe if they come in, I would. But other than that, I'd be a seller. Uh, I hope that helps. Hey, Shin. Yep, coin. So I think these kinds of names, um, I think fundamentally coin has a lot of problems. So I would, if you're long coin, Shin, I would strongly recommend that you listen to um, – Go to my Twitter feed and you'll see a, uh, a podcast I posted that's not mine with Jim Chanos and why he's short coin. Now, understand something about like guys like that, right? They'll short like 2% or 5% of the position. They'll trade around the position with their traders, right? Um, and they'll short more at 120, 130. And they'll keep their thesis intact the whole time, okay? And they'll just scale out of it. So... You have to be careful when you're trying to trade like Buffett or you're trying to trade like, you know, Chanos. Like there's a reason why he's like one of like two or three short funds that are that have actually made it. 
because of how he trades. But uh, these kinds of names could get squeezed because people are under invested and they're still short these names because this has a real problem financially. Their balance sheet's a mess. There's no way they're going to be able to increase stock compensation. It's up tenfold. They hired four times the amount of employees based upon earnings staying where they're at, and their earnings have decreased drastically. Revenues have decreased drastically, right? Like if you kind of go through these numbers, you can't miss it, right? Made made three dollars, made six dollars, made a dollar sixty-two, made three thirty-two, lost two bucks. I mean, it's not it's not rocket science what's happening here. They have problems. It doesn't mean you go straight down, but if people are short this, which they are, they're going to get squeezed. And the mere fact that people are trading it like it's micro strategies because it's coin, you know, same thing. Like the people are going to get squeezed in micro strategies. Micro strategies can easily get back up to 360. So these names can squeeze and they can actually outperform real companies. I don't want to, I shouldn't say that they're not real companies. Uh, they can outperform companies that have better fundamentals is a better way of saying that. Uh, so I, long term, I wouldn't be a buyer. But if you were looking to day trade or a day or two, yeah, you can easily get to the top of this 130, 125. That easily can happen. So I hope that helps. I hope that explanation helps. But uh, if you're long it, I would really recommend that you watch that particular uh, podcast that I that I put out there. They did an excellent job uh, on interviewing him. I don't know who those two dudes are. They don't they don't have a huge following, but they did a really good job. Uh, young guys. I mean, everyone's young to me. I'm in my 40s, so. Um, but I really, I really think they did a very good job interviewing Chanos and letting him speak and getting to the point. He had two really good points. He explained why he'll never invest in a Chinese company. And he explained it better than I, than I ever have, much more eloquently. And also he explained why he's short coin. I would listen to both of those because you'd under, you'll, you'll get it. You'll, you'll, you'll get it and you'll be like, oh, that, that is a problem. And it also makes me think Hood has a problem, a much larger problem than I thought. But you can never rule out that someone's just going to buy Hood because they have $10 in cash. Right. So someone could buy hood to get rid of the entire company. To shut everything down, take the take their uh, their clients, make money off their clients or whoever doesn't want to make money, they'll leave. Right. They'll make a dollar or two off the clients and they'll get all the cash and they make 10, 15 percent. So it could be FTX that does it. Um, so it's something to think about. Now, um, bum, 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 bum. so housing price data came in, just so we're clear, uh, housing price index uh, came in at 19%. The previous was 19.3. Housing price index came in at 1.5%. Previous was 1.9. Um, housing price index came in at 386 versus 381. So essentially what you're seeing here in regards to the housing price index month over month, we're seeing a decrease and year over year, you're seeing a decrease. So something to think about. You're seeing a decrease in housing prices. A little bit, not a lot. So that, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of curious before we go on the CMG. I want to see what happened with Toll with that. Um, yep, Toll's actually up on that news, which makes sense. Toll could run here, by the way. Uh, if you look at Toll, you might want to think about this. Like earnings are over. This could push. Right? This could curl here, right? It could. So something to think about. Now, I know people don't like catching the bottoms or the tops and everyone's got to trade. Everyone trades differently, but, you know, most people try to catch the middle of the meat. Um, depends on your trading style, but I, I would not rule that out. Let's go do CMG. So uh, to me, um, you know, I, I, it depends on your time frame, right? So I, I think they're going to be around. I think it's got to be those people that are getting back to work, right? So if people are getting back to work, they're going to go to Chipotle. So let's get rid of earnings for a moment. Let's get actually let's get rid of all these lines and let's just start over. So you can see where the 10 is, right? You see the 21, we're about to cross. Uh, you got to get over this 50 because instant that's where institutions sell. And if you're selling here on that bear flag, you could have other people that are selling. So you got to watch that. You're going to have to watch that. 
that would be a level that would concern me. Um, but overall, I mean, that's really where we're at. Anything else that you want to go over beforehand? Reminder, Consumer Confidence is coming out at 10 a.m. CPI or PMI is coming out at, um, I've got CPI on the brain, is coming out at 945. Both those are going to drive the market. Both of those can continue to drive the market. So that's definitely something to consider and something to think about. Um, that's really all I have for today. If you have more questions, you know, reach out. You can always email me. Some people don't like talking about the things that they are uh, discussing across the line. So you just email me there. Uh, if you drop a comment, I respond to all the comments. Like this video and share it with everybody. Oh, you know, also, um, I should put this out there. I might move this live stream to, to, um, to this. And you probably want to follow and subscribe to this channel. Hold on one second. So if you type this in, um, let me just put that out there, uh, on YouTube, there's another channel now called RTA Trading Clips, where I put other content out that's like under 60 seconds. You might want to follow that channel because uh, sometimes there'll be different stuff on there that's not going to be on this channel that's more relevant and more timely. Like if it's something happens at 12 o'clock and I think you should pay attention to it, I fire it out on there. Uh, so you might want to take a look at stuff like that. You might want to pay attention to that. All right. So that's all I really have. Uh, and we'll go from there. You're welcome. You're welcome, brother. So let's do shop. And we'll wrap up there. Yeah. Look at the, look at liking the video as a fee, unless you want to start seeing ads. Think about it, think about it that way. I should start charging admission. Like the video, like make sure that everyone likes the video. It's funny. It's amazing how it affects the algorithm. Um, I, I'd be careful here, man. I know people are trying to pick this off. They're trying to pick off Melly. Just be careful. Uh, just be really careful here. There's a certain group of stocks that are not breaking out, right? And we're looking at those right now. Uh, so I, I'd be careful there. These are grossly over. Are they oversold? Yeah, they're really oversold, but just be careful. Um, that to me, just still like really beaten up and can, can go a little bit lower. So something to think about. All right. Um, yeah. Like the video on the way out. All right, everybody have a great day. Trade to win today.